We've looked yesterday on journeying by the word of God, traveling into your destiny by the word of God. And we discovered that you can enter into the realm of the world and go past time, even before your conception, and correct situations that appeared or that stood against your life or against your greatness. Hallelujah. And you can also as well journey by the word of God into the future and uphold, apprehend, and hold on the promises of God and cause them to manifest by the word of God. We looked yesterday at um, uh, a scripture in the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 3, where, uh, where Jacob, where before he was gathered to his fathers, called his 12, disciples, um, 12 sons, and he began to release blessings. But when he came to the firstborn, the Bible says that he looked at Reuben and he says, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. After he spoke that very powerful word, the Bible says that he turns again and he remembers the error that Reuben had done against his life. Praise God. So he, 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 he coins a curse inside the promise. Praise God. As a father was in pain because of what Reuben, the firstborn, had done. And because of what he coined, because of that error that he took in. The Bible says that he spoke, he said, unstable as water. Hallelujah. Unstable as water, thou shall not excel. And in Numbers chapter 1 verse 20, we see actually when Moses is told by God to take... Um, uh, to take a census of the children of Israel. The sons of Reuben were few. Praise God. There were few. And so, when Moses now is prepared to also be gathered to his fathers, or rather to die, the Bible says that he calls the twelve tribes again as well. And now, under the prophetic unction, hallelujah, he travels beyond past time, hallelujah. He travels in the age, praise God, before his conception, and he locates Reuben. He says, Reuben, you, sh you are, he says, Reuben, in Deuteronomy chapter 3, and verse number 6, says, let Reuben live and not die. Let his men not be few, praise God. By the word of God, Moses traveled, praise God. He journeyed into the past and corrected an error to preserve a generation. You can travel in ahead of your time or even behind before you were conceived to correct an error by the word of god hallelujah and it looked at a few points we say that everybody as we are believers here our destinies are spiritually documented in the heavenly books and is bound by covenant through the word of god to advance the will of God upon their manifestation. Amen. And we saw that you can actually take advantage and be able to journey by the word of God into your destiny. Number one, by study. Number two, by meditation. Number three, by, um, by envisioning. Hallelujah. Creating your envision where you're going. Number four, by imagination or forming mental pictures and concepts concerning what you are demanding by the word of god to, to possess and number five by speaking by prophesying and number six constantly confessing what you stand upon by the word of god hallelujah you can journey into your future so tonight i want to share shortly on the word that i have that is entitled the word became flesh the word became flesh hallelujah hallelujah ha hallelujah say to your neighbor the word became flesh come on want to hear your voice say the word became flesh you can do better than that in the name of jesus christ say the word became flesh hallelujah now a very a very moving scripture in the book of john chapter number one with packaged revelation in verses 1, the Bible begins by saying, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. 
verse 1. The same was in the beginning, in verse 2, with God. All things were made by him, and without, without him was not anything made that was made. Hallelujah. Praise God. So now, I want us to pay attention in those three verses, and then go straight to verses number 14. The Bible says, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word became flesh. Hallelujah. By this teaching today, I pray that you will be able to find Jesus in scripture. When you read in the book of Genesis, Exodus, or up to Revelation, what is really necessary? The greatest revelation that you receive is you finding Jesus in scripture. And Jesus is actually located hallelujah and by the way you can find him in every scripture in every page of your bible praise god hallelujah many believers find it confusing and at the same time very difficult to find or create a relative bridge between the person of christ and scripture especially in the moment of that scripture's application hallelujah Hallelujah. I say many believers find it confusing and at the same time very, very difficult to find or create a relative bridge between the person of Christ and scripture, especially in the moment of the scripture's application. Praise God. So, by, but by this word, I pray that your heart will open and you will locate Jesus in scripture when you locate jesus in scripture you can actually behold him praise god you can behold and i'm going to be speaking about this in the name of jesus christ now in the book of john the bible says that and the word was made flesh let's look at this verse the word logos that which was written praise god it became flesh praise god the word became praise god the word became is genomai in, in, in Greek. Hallelujah. Genomai became. Praise God. Be translated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we getting it? To become genomai. The word took a, a, it took a, a, a process. It had to go through a process. Praise God. So that it was not just the written one. Praise God. But it was translated standing by your side hallelujah as flesh we look at jesus and we can find that praise god so the word logos was made was made or became praise god or ginomai into flesh that term flesh is sax s a r x in greek which stands or which means to be stripped of the way we go to butcheries, I mean the way, bu is it butchers? The way they cut off animal and remove the skin. So that relevant um, requirements or relevant required resources may be accessed. Are you getting it? Hallelujah. So the word was revealed by stripping itself of its glory. Hallelujah. So that it may reach you. Say I hear you. Praise God. The word became flesh. The word logos became ginomai. Sax is it was stripped of its glory so that it may be revealed to us, so that it may be physically understandable, so that we may understand and comprehend it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray for you today that you shall find a relative bridge between the scripture and the person of Christ. In the mighty name of the Lord. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in the same, same verse in verse 14. That and we beheld his glory. The word glory is kabod. The heaviness. The weight of the person of God. Praise God. But let, let's look at this word beheld. 
the world beheld, praise God. Ah, Jesus Christ. I don't know if I'm rushing or if I'm taking my time. I'm trying to beat the time of today and the traffic online in Jesus' name. The word became flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Dwelt. It made residence. It came and created a tent. Do, do you remember how Israel was moving from Egypt? Okay? The journey of 40 years praise God into the promised land. Praise God. So Israel had a responsibility. One of the major responsibility is that wherever they went to camp, they made shelters for their loved ones, for their animals. They made a camp to secure, hallelujah, a perimeter camp to secure their possession. Are you getting it? So, dwelling means to pitch a tent. Okay? Hallelujah. It is also the word skenu in, 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 in Greek. To pitch a tent and then to commune. Praise God. So the word pitched a tent among us. Are you getting it? And then it now took up upon itself to commune. To have intimate relationship with man. Hallelujah. To tabernacle, to dwell. For the essence of worship. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's not just to encamp, because to encamp is to surround. Hallelujah. But to pitch tent, dwell and commune, simply means to come and affect everything that we know, both in our mind, in our intellect, in our person, in our health, inside, out. Hallelujah. It had intimacy with you. The word became, the word skin you. Hallelujah. Praise God. With us. Hallelujah. Are we getting that? Tonight, I pray that every scripture that you read, Jesus will be revealed into your person, into your business, into your circumstance, into your situation, in the mighty name of the Lord. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Now when the word now then comes to commune with you, the Bible says, we beheld his glory. Say we beheld. We beheld. The Omai, we visit to behold, to behold, okay? Behold, the Omai, the Omai is in Greek, okay? Meaning we beheld, to behold. We visit, we perceive, okay? And then we tabernacle. Ah, hallelujah. Visit the word of God. Now when you read in the book of, um, in the book of um, Joshua and Deuteronomy, uh, there are relative scripture verses that help us to understand this. The Bible says that God promises his children Israel that he is going to choose a place amongst their tribe. Okay? And then in that place, they will all be leaving everything they have to visit that place in a certain day. Hallelujah. When they visit, one of the requirements was that they were supposed to tabernacle. Hallelujah. To tabernacle means to mingle with the power and the presence of God in that locality. Hallelujah. So through that mingling, they were to worship through song. They were to worship through sacrifice. They had ceremonies. Hallelujah. They had ceremonies that they were also to observe. They were tabernacling. And the Bible says that if you live your property, and go to worship God. God will wash over everything that you left behind. Hallelujah. The Omai, to visit, perceive, and to tabernacle. He that dwells in the secret place shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. The word became flesh. Praise God. There are four major parts that the word of God is divided into for your benefits. There are many, many um, theological uh, theories and also statistics 
But I want to base on this for number one, and I just list them. Number one, the word of God for your benefit is divided, number one, into prophecy. Number one is prophecy. The word of God is prophecy in your life. Hallelujah. When you read the word of God, you are prophesying over your life. When you read the word of God, you are prophesying over things ahead of you. Praise God. The Bible says, calling things that are not as though they are. Hallelujah. By the word of God, you can summon favor. You can summon grace. You can summon favorable outcome of situation. You are prophesying. Son of man, what do you see? I see dry bones. Can these dry bones live? Lord, you know. Then the word of God came to me. The word came to me and said, prophesy over the dry bones and say, thou dry bones, you shall live. And suddenly, flesh and bone, they joined. Sinews appear. They were covered into a skin. And they rose up and they became a great army by the word of God. You prophesy. You bring life. Say, I hear you. So by the word of God, you can speak to stubborn situations. Doesn't matter what challenge you've been going through. Be it and the source thereof. Maybe the source of that challenge is four or five hundred back. Years back. Praise God. You can speak the word of God relatively. And that word will travel back in, in the realms of time. To correct and configure destiny. Hallelujah. Some people have been plagued with sicknesses that follow specific bloodline. But when you speak the word of God, sicknesses disappear from your bloodline. You became cleansed. You become cleansed by the word of God. Hallelujah. I pray for you tonight. May you become cleansed by the word of God. May your system, your finances be cleansed by the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two part is a promise. 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 Promise we know is as a result of covenant. Praise God. The word of God is a promise of God over your life. Praise God. Our promise is relevant when you locate the promise and find the covenant that backs up that promise. Hallelujah. And then align yourself under that covenant and that promise can now manifest. Many people today are walking even the streets of this city with their promise. The, a promise in its own self is not beneficial to you except it be fulfilled. Hallelujah. So for you to ensure that that promise is fulfilled, you have to find the covenant under which that promise was made. Hallelujah. When you locate the covenant, then align yourself under that covenant, beholding that promise. And the promise rule manifests. Number three, the word of God, three is divided into the part that we call command. Command. Hallelujah. Command. Now commands only come from command centers are you getting it command centers whereby in job 22 verse 28 you shall decree a thing and it shall manifest and your light shall shine in your path command is a verbal or written order that comes from a specific higher authority to affect the people that are on the ground situations around you by the word of god can be affected when you speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 1, verse number 12, the Bible says that what do you see? The man says that I see an almond tree. God says you have seen well, for I shall hasten my word to perform it. Hallelujah. So after God speaks that, you can rise up and begin to command situations around you to align. Hallelujah. I pray for you. May you be a beneficiary of the power of the word of God. Lastly, the word of God carries a message from God. Hallelujah. The word of God carries a message from God. Say a message from God. Say a message from God. And a message from God is what will order your destiny. A message from God. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 29, The voice of the Lord is full of power. The voice of the Lord is is full of majesty sorry the voice of the lord is powerful so 
Any message that comes from God, it does not come to oppress you. Hallelujah. It comes to give you direction. It comes to rescue you. Hallelujah. And to align you to your purpose. I pray for you today. In the name of Jesus. May you receive grace. And may you be aligned to your purpose. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now how very fast. How do you change? How do you participate in ensuring that the word of God that was spoken in your life. Is translated from logos into becoming flesh. Hallelujah. That word becoming flesh means it moves from the spiritual realm. Praise God. And it locates and finds ex expression in your physical realm. Hallelujah. So that you become a walking wonder. You become a miracle on your own self by the word of God. How do you then ensure and participate to ensure that the word that was spoken. Some of you carry mind boggling prophecies from the word of God, from men of God you encountered seasons back. But that word is still a promise. How then can you relatively participate in ensuring that the word that was spoken into your life becomes flesh? Number one, you have to locate the spiritual womb of that word. The word that is spoken cannot actually grow and breed or be bred effectively except it is in a womb hallelujah except it is in a womb jesus the bible says is the word the word was with god and the word was god hallelujah and the bible then says that we beheld his glory hallelujah so this very word it had to find a womb in a woman called mary hallelujah praise god so locate the womb. There is a technology in the spirit that you can actually uh, bring forth. You can actually access that will ensure that that word does not pass by you. It will then come and it will it will it will it will it will inhabit in us in a position or a realm in the spirit in a spiritual womb for you. Hallelujah! Locate a spiritual womb. Now a spiritual womb will then be a habitation of that word in the season of obscurity hallelujah when saul had an encounter with the man of god samuel samuel anointed saul and said you have been chosen to be captain over the people of god when he comes home number one thing is that he finds his uncle the uncle looks at the boy and he sees some confidence in saul then he begins to inquire uh, where have you been? He says, I went to look for donkeys. I know. The man says, I know. Then he's like, uh, and then uh, he says, well, uh, I met um, uh, Samuel, the servant of God. The angle is like, and then he told me that the donkeys have been found. Hey. And then, so he wanted more information. And there is a possibility the uncle of Saul was a diviner. Hallelujah. Praise God. Laban speaks to Jacob and says, please stay. For I have found out through divination that you, I am blessed because of you. Diviners can locate your abilities and your capacity. Hallelujah. Praise God. But you see, the wisdom of this man is that he kept silent when the word is in the womb. Don't be public. Many people receive prophecy. The first thing they do is that they go to hold Kamkunji with their neighbor. Do you know what? The man of God located me. Hey, today he spoke this in my life. And because of that, people have been engaged in unnecessary battles without their knowledge. I pray for you. May you position yourself in the proper wisdom to ensure that the word that was spoken in life, before it comes forth to manifest, it is secure and is not miscarried in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So Luke chapter number 2 verse 19. The Bible says, But Mary kept all things and pondered them in her heart. He did not then publish who Jesus was. He didn't speak of things that he knew of about Christ, the son whom she had carried and whom she had given birth. But she kept, looked at Jesus, but then she kept it a secret. Are you able to keep a secret of how exciting that prophecy was on your life? Is wisdom. Praise God. Number two, very fast. 
uh, find a spiritual location that is conducive for your birthing. Not every altar, hallelujah, are you getting this? Not every altar can actually birth your miracle in your season. I will shock you. Not every man of God. There are men of God. I've learned this even on myself. There are men of God I give seed to when I'm in battle. There are men of God I give seed to when I want to advance in the next level. There are men of God I give seed to when I want total rest. Hallelujah. But you can... Uh, I don't know. I should not then I'll find the spiritual location for bathing. And this one you can use prophecy as a compass. Okay? So Joseph is told, well, arise and go. Okay? To Bethlehem. Was it Bethlehem of Judah? And go and be counted. There was a census. As he was going, prophecy had said that the Savior, Jesus Christ, will be born in where? Bethlehem, Judah. So prophecy was pulling Joseph and his fiance. Are you getting it? It was a spiritual compass. Now you can locate a spiritual compass. Hallelujah. There's a word that will desire and will command you to go to Catalonia. There's a word that will command you to go to heaven's gate. There's a word that will command you to come and sit in the house of God. Tell the man of God, please, can I have that key for seven nights? And you sit here and you are in tongues. Rados kataya, likata bazakata, likata bazak. For seven nights, you are bathing the word of God. It's a spiritual location. Hallelujah. Lastly, locate the midwife, mentor, midwife. Intercessors are necessary for your proper positioning and manifestation of that word. For it to come from the spirit, the logos to be translated into flesh. Locate your Elizabeth. Who is your Elizabeth? Ask your friend who is your Elizabeth. Come on, somebody loudly say, who is your Elizabeth? Who is your Elizabeth? Find your Elizabeth. Find your Elizabeth. That word that was spoken in you. There is somebody God has anointed to help you birth that word. We have so many demonic midwives that are out to kill your children. Herod said, if he be a male child, then you shall throw him to the river. But there was a woman. Hallelujah. The Bible calls her Shipra. And this woman, when Pharaoh saw that they were securing and keeping some Hebrew children, he summoned these two and asked, what is it that you cannot follow my command and I'm your king? They had an issue. They said, well, the women of Hebrew, the Hebrew women are so faster they give birth even before they are on the full stool. Hallelujah. They are so faster. You have to get to a place where you are faster before the devil announces the death of your child. You are breastfeeding. You are winning the baby. Hallelujah. Praise God. Find a spiritual midwife. And the Bible says that because of this, God's favor was upon these midwives. There are those who come and kill your child. There are those who come and exchange your child. There are those who come and threaten, like Herod. He said, where is this child, the king of the Jews, that has been born? I also want to go and worship. It was not worship. This man was to kill. Hallelujah. Praise God. Find the midwife. Stand up on your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're going to make some prayer. We're going to make some prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many times that you have had an encounter in the spirit and received the word of God. I used to dream sometimes and I would be in a vision and I would be given a scripture and when I wake up, it's a good scripture but I've forgotten. You see, the enemy has all technology to intercept the word of God that is coming to make you relevant. Hallelujah. You can dream. A scripture comes that is going to position you but suddenly that scripture it just you wake up, it cannot be downloaded into your into your, into your now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Or you are in a place like this, and prophecy comes from your life. You go out, you can't even remember. Lift up your hand, say every demon, every spirit, every covenant, every altar that is in charge of manipulating my mind, 
my memory from receiving the word of God expire today expire today expire today expire today in the name of Jesus say every demonic midwife that is hunting down the manifestation of a miracle in the word of God in my life right now I dethrone you I arrest you and I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ begin to download the word of God begin to declare father every word that you spoke over my life Lord I pray cause it to manifest bring it forth oh God let it appear let it manifest let it oh God Almighty be translated into flesh in name name of Jesus Christ hallelujah and I pray for you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth some of you you are blessed you are anointed you are lifted by the word of God yet you have not been able to have that capacity to step into the dimension that the word of God spoke you to become tonight I pray by the mercy of God may you be stretched into that dimension that the word of God is speaking about your life in the mighty name of the Lord may you ginomai may you become what the word of God has spoken you to become in the name of the Lord may your healing manifest may your miracle appear May your breakthrough come without struggle. May you enter into the realm of suddenly in the mighty name of the Lord. You conceive that word by the time to birth has come. I command the waters to break. I command the waters to break. I command the back canal to open. Let the word become flesh for you. Let the word become flesh for you. Let the word become flesh for you in the mighty name of the Lord. And some of you that has been under plague of Satan attack one center left right center because of the word you carry i command that attack beginning now to cease any attack on your health because of the blessing you carry because of the word that was spoken in life i cancel that attack i revoke and nullify the transaction that has been sponsoring that demonic attack in the name of the lord jesus christ i lift you up out of that mess i position you on your proper realm of victory by the word of God become what God has spoken you to become become what God has spoken you to become in the mighty name of the Lord some of you you shall dominate the corridors of power in this city in this nation and across the cities of the world in the mighty name of the Lord I command heaven to open let the word cause you to become a kingdom a kingdom powerful powerful son in the mighty name of the lord may you influence nations may you affect territories affect cities may people call you blessed because of the word of god in the mighty name of the lord and whatever faculty that was to manifest and come forward with the word of god when jesus was being born the bible says that there were three magis there's a team of managers that came in three groups. They carried specific things that were speaking into prophetically into the life of Jesus. They carried value, gold. I declare today, let your helpers appear. Anybody that has been sent in your life to be by covenant to be a helper, I command them to appear every curtain shielding you from your helpers i command those curtains right now to be torn open let your helpers appear let that person that is supposed to partner with you in that business in that ministry in your life appear today by the word of god i cause them to appear i call them forward those that have been confused those that have been withheld by powers of darkness i command them right now to be released to you partners and all your helpers they appear in the mighty name of jesus christ father we thank you lord we bless your holy name we give you praise and we give you honor in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray hallelujah we say quiet to our online audience and i want us to say the grace